Like everything in the military, this mission starts early. It's just past six when eight Humvees full of soldiers pull up for the morning briefing. They're all with the 45th Sustainment Brigade, an army unit based in a tiny outpost of the war called Q West. This morning we're going over to a village called Ed Hala, Ed Hala Village. Myself, Colonel McLaughlin, General Baez will more than likely go in, talk, meet with the village elder or the sheikh, we'll let them know what we're here for, what we're going to do, and where, we, um, where we'd like to set up and what we'd like to do. We're going to go out to a little village, do some uh, nice little things for the villagers. We're bringing some medics out there, probably pass out some school supplies and things like that too. Humanitarian aid. You guys can see out there because you guys are in full out here. Uh, anytime we go off the base, we always get in full gear just in case something happens. Is that your rosary up there? Uh, yes. To me, it's always a reminder that someone is out there looking out for me. I feel like I'm always in the Lord's hands while we go outside the gate. It just gives you a nice comforting feeling. The convoy we're riding in is fully armed and armored, but in a lot of ways, we feel really far from the war. We're about 180 miles north of Baghdad, and I'm told it's safe here. Of course, safe in Iraq is a relative term. It's a strange feeling riding in a convoy because we just kind of take over the road. We drive in between lanes and sometimes even against traffic. They pull to the side to get out of our way. Any vehicle that wasn't stop or pull over to the side, we would take as a threat and would use appropriate actions necessary to stop that vehicle so it doesn't get too close to our convoy. Behind our convoy, there's probably 30-something vehicles that are just out there in the middle of the road just waiting because they can't pass us. We won't let them get close enough to pass us. About half an hour into the drive, we have to stop in the middle of the road. The gunners all get into position to guard the convoy. We stopped this time because we had to stop and the Iraqi general that is with us went back to the checkpoint that we just passed and picked up the son of one of the village elders so that the village elder can lead us into his village. When we finally get to the village, my first impression is that this is a really hard place to live. What you can't see is that it's freezing. It's in the 30s and there's this really harsh wind blowing sand everywhere. We all show up bundled in layers of clothing, but the villagers just have thin cotton shirts and sweatshirts on. Ahmed al-Sharji, what are you doing? Today we're just going to be um, seeing the, uh, females, uh, the females here, trying to see if we can help them out with any medications for themselves or for their kids. We're also bringing them vitamins, multivitamins and um, iron for the females. And uh, the doctor's basically going to be looking at the kids and actually everybody here to see if there's anything that she can um, help them out with. <laughs> they all seem to have so little, but they're really anxious to make us feel welcome. One young girl takes me by the hand and sits me down next to their space heater. Next door to this impromptu clinic, American and Iraqi soldiers are starting to give out care packages. They've been shipped in from a volunteer group in the States, and there's supposed to be one for every family in the village. But there's such a rush for the packages that some families get left out. Al Arabia? American For many soldiers, this is a rare opportunity to actually meet and interact with Iraqis. Like everything they farm is like we die for the past two years. But with only three translators for 40 soldiers, it's hard to communicate. 
She wants uh, chapstick, lipstick, and like that. teddy it's bear. Better. All we can do is smile and take pictures. Nice. Yes. The kids get candy and school supplies. They're also getting children's books about Barney in English, which doesn't seem particularly helpful. But the whole operation is kind of like that. It's well-meaning, but the village seems to need so much more than what's in these boxes.